Hey guys, how's it going? In this video, I want to show you how to implement an MVVM architecture um, in an Android project. Now, before we get started, I just want to mention that this is going to be a very basic um, implementation, but it does cover all the basics for the MVVM architecture, right? So that you can um, extend it later on and improve upon it if you need, right? So this covers just the basics of MVVM. Also, if you make it to the end of the video, I have a bit of information about where you can get more information about this topic. All right, so let's get started. Open up your Android Studio, create a new project, and we're gonna select an empty activity, okay? We're gonna go from the complete start and build an MVVM application. All right, I'm gonna call my application MVVM. You can obviously call it whatever you like. All right, so let's go ahead and click Finish. And that will build for us a just basic, basic um, empty screen application. All right, so there's a couple of things that we need to do here. So first of all, I wanna have a screen uh, with a uh, image or a button, let's say, that when we click it, we invoke the functionality of the application, okay? So um, let's go ahead and first create our image. So in the resources folder, I'm gonna right click, select new, and then go to Vector Asset. Okay, so in Vector Asset, I'm gonna find, um, let me find something like um, OK, or should I say check. Okay, so this, I'm gonna select the check circle. This is going to be basically when everything worked well. Okay, let's give it a nice color here. Uh, let me see how we do that, there we go. I'm gonna give it like a green color choose that, I'm gonna say I see okay, next and finish. Okay, so we have a image for everything is okay. Let's create a new one, um, also vector asset, and that will be for the uh, cancel. Okay, that's very similar. Okay, let's give it like a reddish color. Okay, you can choose whatever you like. All right, so I'm gonna call this I see cancel. All right, next, and then click Finish. Okay, so we have our IC OK and IC Cancel. So let's create our um, small interface. I'm gonna go into activity underscore main, and I'm just gonna remove this text view, which um, is just a text, we don't really need that. All right, so let's move on to the um, visual editor here. I'm gonna put an image view right in the middle that's gonna have the IC Cancel, okay? Now, we're gonna have the cancel. Uh, there was an ID error, but no worries. Let's do that again. Image view, cancel. Okay, that's fine. So let's position it right in the middle. So I'm gonna put these constraints to the edges of my screen, just like that. Okay, it's right in the middle. So now I wanna increase the size. So let's say 200 dp. Okay, if I hit option return, I'm gonna say extract dimension resource, and that's going to be, let's call this size, okay? And we're gonna have the height also dimension size, okay? If we look here, then this is going to be our screen at the start, right? We're gonna replace this image with an okay sign if everything works fine. All right, so now let's go ahead and create our package structure for our MBVM architecture, so here, in my existing package, I'm gonna select new and create a new package. I'm gonna call this model, then a new package that I'm gonna call view, and then a new package that I'm gonna call view model. Okay, now obviously my main activity is going to be part of the view, okay? It's the part that displays the information, so I'm just gonna move it here. And let's go ahead and start to build our model. I'm gonna right click and create a new Kotlin file. I'm gonna call this, uh, whatever you want to, want to call it, I'm gonna call this data item. It's very generic, it doesn't really matter what we have here. Okay, so this is going to be a data class for me. Okay, and I'm gonna create the structure here. I'm simply gonna have a val ID of type int. Okay, so for this small example, this is all I need, just an ID um, that is of type integer. Okay, also in the model, I'm gonna right click and create a new Kotlin file, and I'm gonna call this um, data item provider. 
Okay, so this is what is going to provide me with uh, data items. Okay, and here, first of all, let's make this an object so that it's available um, everywhere and it's um, static so I don't have to instantiate it. Okay, now this is going to have a function called get data items and this is going to have a size of integer. So how many items do I want to provide? And here we're simply going to say uh, we're going to create a range, so zero until size. We're going to convert that to a list, so to list. Okay, and then here we're going to map and we're going to create the data items. So data item and the data item has an ID. Let's call this it because it is the element that is provided from the list. Okay, so we're mapping each element from the list to a data item. So that means the function returns a list of data items but with the amount that we provide here. Okay, so that is my data item. Now, um, that is all for my model. Now, in a real world situation, you might have something else providing your data, right? So maybe you would get your data from um, a web service, a backend, or from a database. It doesn't really matter, right? This is just um, a mock for actual data that uh, you would receive in a real world situation. All right, so let's go ahead and create our view model. So here I'm going to right click, select new Kotlin file, and I'm going to call this uh, main view model. Okay, this is also a class. I'm calling it main view model because I have a main activity that's going to display my information. So this is going to be main view model. Now this will extend from view model from Android X lifecycle. Okay, and we instantiate it here. Now, there's a couple of things that are specific to this view model. So first of all, it has its own life cycle. Okay, that's why it is really useful for um, Android development. That's why it was built by uh, Google in this way. So the life cycle is basically the whole life cycle of the application. Okay, it doesn't really depend on the life cycle of the view that uses it. Okay, very important. And it also has what we call a um, live data. Okay, the live data is basically observable if you're used to that terminology, or you could call it just a kind of a generator for data. Okay, so that is what the view will connect to in order to retrieve the information that this view model provides. Okay, so here I'm going to create the live data. I'm going to say val um, item ld for live data, and that's going to be a mutable live data. Okay, I want it mutable because I want to be able to update it whenever I need. And this will provide a list of data items. Okay, and instantiate it here, import the data item, and there we go. So this is my item LD. In a real world situation, like I mentioned, this can be anything, okay? It can be the data you receive from a database or from an internet connection. Now, the view model also have a, has a function called get items okay and this will be invoked by the view to retrieve the elements okay so here we have val items okay that's going to be our data item provider okay and since this is an object um, i don't have to instantiate it i just get data items and here i'm going to provide a random dot um, what is it? Next int. And let's put a limit here so that we don't have 30,000 or so. Um, let's put 100. Okay. Then we have items, uh, item LD. Okay. We need to update our live data. Dot value is going to be my items. Okay. So as you know, the view model basically uh, provides the connection between the business logic, which is the uh, model, okay, whatever functionality you have here to provide the data, and the view, okay, so the connection between model and view, which the view just displays the data, okay, view model, very, very important because it has its own life cycle, so you don't, uh, so you have a separation between the uh, life cycle of the view and the uh, life cycle of the business logic. Okay, very, very important. So that is all we need for our main view model. Of course, in a real world situation, you might have a lot more functionality here. But for us, we just have mock data. So this is an easy way to retrieve that mock data.
All right, so now moving on to main activity, what we need here is we need to have access to the view model. And in order to do that, um, there is a new way that um, Google provides to us to instantiate the view model. Now, in order to use this new way, um, which I wanna show you because it's much easier than the old way, um, we're gonna open up, so I hit double shift, okay? I'm gonna open up the build.gradle. Be sure to open the app version of that file. And down below here in dependencies, we're gonna add a new dependency. So I'm gonna say implementation. And here I'm gonna have Android X dot fragment colon fragment dash KTX, okay, Kotlin, colon 1.1.0. Okay, so we need this library in order to be able to instantiate the view model nicely. Okay, so let's just go ahead and sync now. We need to wait for that. All right, so that worked fine. Um, if that provided an error for you, then you mistyped this part, okay? So make sure that is typed correctly. Next, moving on back to main activity. Here at the top, I'm gonna create the view model. So I'm gonna say val view model of type main view model, okay? And the way we instantiate it is by view models. Okay, we don't need anything else here. We don't need the type because we have it here. So there we go. We have our view model created for us. Okay, so that provides a separation between the lifecycle of the activity, the view, and the view model. All right, next up, what we need to do is we need to observe. So the terminology is we need to observe the data from the view model. So the data is going to be provided here. Okay, so the way I like to do this, I want to have another function that's called observe view model. Okay, so let's go ahead and create that or have observe view model. Okay, now we're going to have view model dot um, items item ld dot observe. Now we need to provide the lifecycle owner, which is the activity. So I'm going to save this and then we have an observer. So observer. And inside here, we will get our items list. Okay, there we go. So we have a list of data items. Okay, so here, once we get that, we need to update our interface. So I'm gonna say image view, um, I think it's called, let me see. What is that called? Image view two. Okay, let's call this simply image view. Okay, image view dot um, set image resource. So I'm going to update the resource. I'm going to say r.drawable.icok. Then um, I have, let's also display the amount of items that we received. Okay, so for that, I'm going to go into my interface and I'm going to move to, um, to this screen. I'm going to add a text view right down below here. Okay. I'm going to position it in the center horizontally, and I'm going to also position it right before the image. Okay. Now, uh, moving back here, the text is text view. Let's call the text something like received zero items. I'm also going to make this visibility gone so that it doesn't appear at the start. Okay. And let's put a small padding top of, let's say, 50 dp. Okay, let's extract that. I usually like to extract values like that, having um, text. All right, there we go. Now, moving back to our main activity here, we need to update our text view. So I'm going to call this text view dot uh, set text. Here I'm going to have received dollar, and here I'm going to have items list dot size and call this items, okay? And also remember it's gone, so we need to update the visibility. So dot visibility equals view dot visible. All right, so that should update my information. Now, if you run this application now, nothing happens. The reason for that is I need to connect the click on this item, on this image, to um, a functionality 
to call this function to get the items, okay? To actually provide the functionality. So here, I'm gonna create a new function, fun, um, something like on uh, or get items. And this will take an element view. And here I'm simply gonna say view model dot get items, okay? Um, I think this could be made private, that's fine. What else I need? I need to actually connect the click here. So um, let's go ahead and say on click, get items. All right, so that should be all we need. I think that's all we need. So let's go ahead and run this um, application. Let me just select a nicer uh, simulator here. And uh, let's run this and test it out. Let's see what functionality we get. Okay, so we have our application. Let's go ahead and click on that. And we can see that we get received 14 items with a green um, image here. If I click again, the functionality will be called again and it should update my data here. So 18, 1, 29, 66, and so on and so forth, right? So uh, this is a completely random number because we set random up until 100 here. All right, so that is it. That is how you implement um, the NVDM architecture in an Android application. Now I know this is quite simple. Um, the functionality here is quite simple and I've kept it like that on purpose so that you see how the architecture is implemented, okay? But this is a very, very scalable architecture. So you could have as many view models as you need for your views, okay? So if you have multiple fragments, if you have multiple activities, you can have as many view models as you want so that you are able to detach the, um, the UI, the view, from the model. Okay, very, very useful. Now, as I mentioned at the start of the video, you can get more information about this. I have um, a few courses that are uh, using that use the MVVM architecture to implement a real-world application, a much more complex um, use case. So make sure to check those out in the video description, okay? So if you're interested in that, um, you will find a lot more information and more detail there and using um, more libraries as well to build a real world example. All right, so that's it for today. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.